I'll just say one or two things by way of introduction. Dr. Schlogel there is a well-known scholar in Zen Buddhism. She lived in Japan for 12 years and she teaches Zen Buddhism in London. She was also the librarian of the Buddhist society till very recently. And many people know her because many people louder. have been her students. Little louder. Yes. We have been wanting to arrange this dialogue with Krishnaji from last year. It was not possible. Dr. Rahula is from Ceylon, Sri Lanka, and he is a very great Buddhist scholar, both in the Theravada and the Mahayana. He lectures in Ceylon, in Oxford. He goes to USA, Japan, and he is quite well known and has written quite a few books. And I'm very glad it's possible that we have this dialogue today with Krishnaji. Probably you know all, you all know Dr. Berman myself, so we don't need it. <laughs> Yes, sir. and uh, we know you so well, and uh, I have been following your teaching, if you allow me to use that word. I know that you don't like that word. Very it's all right, sir. Yes, and uh, uh, from my young days, and uh, I have read most of your books with great interest, deep interest. And uh, I wanted to have this discussion with you for a long time. And I am very happy, very pleased that uh, we got this opportunity today, thanks to Mr. Narayan for arranging all this. I must say that uh, as I have followed your teachings, your books for many years, uh, I must say that for a person, who knows Buddha's teaching sufficiently well, your teaching is quite familiar. And uh, for a person like that, it is not a new thing, it is uh, uh, quite familiar. And uh, what the Buddha taught 2,500 years ago, you teach today in a new idiom, new style and you put his teaching into a new garb. And that is what I feel always when I read your books. And I have written very often, I haven't got the books here, practically most of your books are with me. And when I read your books, very often I write on the margin, compare such and such a teaching of the Buddha. Sometimes I even quote the verse, and chapter and verse the text. And uh, not only Buddha's teaching, the original ancient teaching, but even later Buddhist philosophers' ideas, I will discuss with you later, even those things uh, you say practically exactly the same. I was surprised how you got these things so well and so beautifully. And uh, to begin with, I want to, to mention very briefly few points which are common between Buddha's teaching and your teaching. And for instance, Buddha did not accept God who created the world and who rules this world and rewards and punishments people for their actions. You also don't accept that idea, I believe. Then Buddha did not accept the old Vedic uh, Brahmanic idea of eternal, permanent, everlasting, unchanging soul, Arthur. Buddha denied it. And you also, I think, don't accept that soul, that kind of soul. Then 
Buddha begins his teaching on the ground that human life is in predicament, suffering, conflict, sorrow. And I see in your books you always emphasize that. And then uh, Buddha says that the cause of this conflict, suffering, all that is due to the selfishness which is created by the wrong idea of self, myself, my Atma. And I think you say the same thing. And uh, uh, then Buddha says, when one is free from that desire, attachment, self, he is free from suffering, he is free from conflict. And uh, uh, in fact you said somewhere, I remember, freedom means freedom from all attachment, you said somewhere. And exactly that is what the Buddha taught, that all attachment, there is no discrimination there. There is no good attachment and bad attachment. Right. Of course, relatively there is in our uh, ordinary practical life, but uh, ultimately there is no such division. Then, uh, seeing truth, Realization of truth, that is, to see things as they are, as the Buddha says in the Buddhist terminology, yatha bhutam, that means as things are. Yes, yatha bhutam. When you see that, you see the reality, you see the truth, and you are free from that conflict. I think this is uh, this is what uh, uh, very often you say. In a, in a discussion, I think, between uh, you and Dr. Bohm, uh, I think it is, uh, is that a reality and truth or... Truth and actuality. Truth and actuality. In that discussion, uh, you have discussed this uh, question. When I read that uh, recently, I thought this is uh, uh, quite well known in Buddhist thought as Sangriti Satya and Paramartha Satya. Sangriti Satya is the conventional truth, Paramartha Satya is the absolute or ultimate truth. And uh, so uh, you can't see the ultimate truth or the absolute truth without seeing the relative or conventional truth. That is the Buddhist attitude. Yes, I think you say the same thing. Yes, sir. Yes. Then, one of your, uh, of course, this is uh, more in the popular level, but it is very important. You always say that you must not depend on authority, anybody's authority, anybody's teaching. You must realize yourself, you must see it for yourself. This is a teaching very well known in Buddhist, Buddhism. And Buddha told the Kalamas that don't accept anything just because it is given by religion or scriptures or by a teacher or by guru, only if you see for yourself that it is right, then accept. If you see it is wrong or bad, then reject. And uh, I remember a very interesting discussion you had with uh, Swami Venkatesana. Yes, sir. Yes, he, his point was very much that old idea of guru importance of Guru. But you always said, what can he do? It is your job, your business to do it. A guru can't save you. Uh, this is the, exactly the Buddhist attitude, that you should not accept authority. Uh, and after reading, I listened to that also. A fr friend of mine played that record, the tape. Later on I read in the, I think the book, your book... Uh, the Awakening of Intelligence. Awakening of Intelligence, okay. the whole thing. After reading, at the end I wrote, as from the text, Buddha has said this in two, all this discussion is summarized by the Buddha in two lines in the Dhammapada. Tum hei kichang atapang akkhataru tathakta. You should make the effort, the Buddha's only thing. Right. Yes, this is this in the Dhammapada you have read long, long ago when you were young. <laughs> I, because I found it in uh, Mary Latyan's book. Yes. 
you go to it uh, somewhere, not this line, but another thing. Then, another very important thing many people don't understand when you say, uh, I must say this openly, uh, let them know it, which they don't understand your emphasis in awareness, on awareness, mindfulness. This is a thing in Buddha's teaching, very, very important, extremely important. This is given in the Satipatthana Sutta, to be aware to be mindful. I myself was surprised when I read in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, that is the, the discourse Sutta about the last uh, months of his life. At every point, wherever he stopped and talked to his disciples, he said always be aware, cultivate awareness, mindfulness. It is called Satipatthana, that means really presence of awareness, presence of mindfulness. This also is one of your very strong points in your teaching, which I appreciate very much and follow. Then another interesting thing, your emphasis always on impermanent suffering, impermanence. This is one of the fundamental things in Buddha's teaching, everything is impermanent, there is nothing wrong. And in one place you say exactly freedom I think it is in the book Freedom from the Unknown I Have. To discover nothing is permanent is of tremendous importance, for only then is the mind free. That is exactly uh, the, in, the, in the Four Noble Truths of the Buddha, that when you see that. Uh, then uh, another very, uh, uh, very interesting small point I want to mention how the, the, your teaching and the Buddha's teaching go together without any conflict. I think in one place, in one freedom from the known in that book, you say, control and outward discipline are not the way, nor has undisciplined life any value. When I read this, I wrote there also on the mind, Buddha told Abraham, a Brahmin asked the Buddha, how did you attain to these heights of spiritual and intellectual height? By what precepts? By what discipline? By uh, uh, what uh, uh, knowledge did you attain? Buddha said, not by knowledge, not by discipline, not by precepts, not by what? nor without them. That is the important thing. He said, not by these things, but not without them also. Yeah, exactly what you say, you condemn uh, uh, this uh, slavery to discipline, but without discipline, I pass no That is exactly in Zen, which is Buddhism, after all. There, there's no called, nothing called Zen Buddhism. Zen is Buddhism. <laughs> yes. In Zen, uh, the, the discipline, this attachment and slavery, that to that is very much condemned. But there is no Buddhist sect in the world, I think, where discipline is so much emphasized. I think uh, Dr. Schlegel will say about this later. Uh, therefore, all these things, we have many other things to talk, but to begin with, I want to say that uh, the, the, these things, these fundamental things, are quite in agreement and there is no conflict between you and the Buddha. Of course you are not a Buddhist, as you say, uh, yes. no, and I myself don't know what am I, that uh, it does not matter, but uh, uh, you are teaching and the Buddha is teaching, there is hardly a conflict. Only uh, you say the same thing in a fascinating way for the man today. For the modern man. And uh, uh, now I would like to know what you think about all this. May I say, sir, with due respect, why you compare? No, this is because when I read your books, as a Buddhist scholar, one who has studied Buddhist texts. 
I always see it is the same thing. Yes, sir. But um, if I may ask, <coughs> what is the necessity of comparing? There is no necessity at all. If you hadn't, if you are not a scholar of Buddhism and all the sutras and the sayings of the Buddha, if you are just not scholarly and gone into very deeply into Buddhism, how would you strike your reading this without the background of all that? That I can't tell you, because I was never without that background. So that I'm just... It is a condition. You are putting... It is a condition. We are all conditioned. That's right. Yes, therefore I can't answer that question, because I don't know what would be the position. So, if I may point out... I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. Does knowledge condition human beings? Uh, knowledge of scriptures, knowledge of what saints have said, and so on, so on, so on, the whole gamut of so-called sacred books. Does that help man at all? Uh, it suddenly scriptures and all our knowledge condition. There is no doubt. It, con it, it, it conditions. It is con condition. conditioning. But I should say that knowledge is not absolutely unnecessary. Absolutely. Not unnecessary. And it is just like this. Buddha has pointed out this very clearly. Uh, you want to cross the river, there is no bridge, but uh, you make a boat for yourself and you cross with the help of the boat. Going to the other shore, if you think, oh, this boat has been very useful to me, very helpful to me, I can't leave it here, I will carry it, and he, you put it on your shoulder. And he asked because is that man acting right? He said, no. Then what you should do is, you say, of course this boat was very helpful to me, but I have crossed. Now it is no, no more useful to me, and I leave it here for somebody else to leave. That is the attitude for knowledge and learn. Buddha says, even the teaching, not only that, even the virtues, so-called virtues, moral yes, virtues, are also like the boat. And no. they, they have a relative value and condition value. I, I would like to question, I'm not doubting what you are saying, sir, but I'd like to question whether knowledge in its actual sense has <coughs> liberating quality of the mind. I, uh, I don't think knowledge can liberate. Has the quality, sir. Knowledge can't, but the quality that you derive from knowledge, the strength, the sense of capacity, the sense of value, the feeling that you know, the weight of knowledge, doesn't that strengthen the Self? Certainly. Certainly. So, will knowledge actually Does knowledge actually condition man? Let's put it that way. Uh, knowledge, yes, sir. Yeah. So, yes. 
The word knowledge, we mean surely both of us and all of us surely mean uh, the accumulation of information, accumulation of experience, accumulation of various facts and theories and principles, the past and the present. All that bundle we call knowledge. Does then the past help? Because knowledge is the past. All that past, all that knowledge disappears the moment you see the truth. Uh, no, can I, can a mind that's burdened with knowledge see truth? Of course, if, if, the, if the mind is burned and clouded and covered with knowledge, in but that condition is. So it is, generally it is. Most minds are filled and crippled with knowledge. I am using the word cripple in the sense that weighed down. Yes, yes. Can such a mind perceive what is true, or must it be free from knowledge? It, it, the, to, to see the truth, mind must be free from all knowledge. All now, knowledge. So why should one accumulate knowledge and then abandon it and then see truth? I you think, follow what I am saying? Yes, yes. I, I, I think that is in our life, even when we take our ordinary life, most of the things which we abandon are useful at the beginning. And uh, for instance, in our studies, as children, at school, we can't write without rules. Of course, of course. But uh, today I can't write on rule paper. No, no. But but uh, but if I at that stage, wait, wait, sir. I agree. <coughs> I agree. <coughs> when you are at school, college, and university, <coughs> we need lines, lines, right? Yes. And all the rest of it. <coughs> but does does not the beginning matter enormously? I beg your pardon? Does not a beginning yes. matter enormously, which might condition the few the, as he grows up? You understand my, what I'm trying to I don't know if I'm making myself clear. No. Does freedom lie at the end or at the beginning? Uh, it has no beginning, no end. No, therefore. Therefore, freedom has no beginning, no end. And uh, does, would you say that freedom is freedom limited by knowledge? Uh, uh, freedom is not limited by knowledge. Perhaps uh, knowledge which is wrongly applied or acquired may obstruct freedom. No, there is no wrong or right uh, accumulation of knowledge. knowledge. I, may get, I may do certain ugly things yes. hmm, and repent or carry on with those ugly things, which again is part of my knowledge. Yes. So I am asking if, if knowledge leads to freedom. As you say, discipline is necessary in the beginning. That's right. That's right. And as you grow older, mature, uh, acquire capacities and so on, so on, so on, that discipline has it not conditioned the mind? so that it can never abandon 
discipline in the, in the usual sense of that word. Your yes, I fully quite understand. You agree that discipline at the beginning, at a certain level, is necessary. I, I question that. When I say I question it, I don't mean I doubt it or it's not necessary, but I begin, I, que- I question it in order to inquire. Yes, I, I should say at a certain level it is necessary. And if you cannot abandon it ever, now for instance, in the, in the, I'm talking from the Buddhist point of view, and uh, uh, when you take there are, there are two words in Buddhism uh, with regard to the, uh, the, the, the way, uh, saiksha and asaiksha. Saiksha is all those people who are on the way, have not yet arrived. Okay. That means that all those disciplines and all those things, are good and bad, right and wrong. And Aram, who has realized the truth is called a side. Yes. He has no discipline. No, but he is pure. Yes, I understand this. Yes, but but I mean uh, that is a fact in life. I I, I question that. Uh, <coughs> I have no doubt about it in my mind. Uh, then we stopped inquiry. Uh, no, it is not so. No, I mean. <coughs> We are, we are talking about knowledge. Knowledge being useful or necessary as a boat to cross the river. I, <clears throat> I want to inquire into that fact or into that simile yeah. whether it is the truth. Whether it is the truth. True. Whether it is. Uh, mm, whether it has the quality of truth. Let's put it that way. For the moment I'm putting it. Uh, You mean that simile or that teaching? The whole of that. Which means, uh, just a minute, which means accepting evolution. Yes. Right. Accepting evolution. Evolution. Yes. Uh, Gradually. Yes. Step by step, advancing. Yes. And ultimately reach. Yes. Right. First, I discipline, control, effort, hmm? and as I get more capacity, more energy, more strength, yes. I abandon it and move on. Yes. There is no plan like that. No? There is no plan. There no, is no, I'm no not, plan I'm not, like that. I am not saying that there is a plan. I am I'm, I'm asking for inquiry yes. whether there is such movement such progress, progress at all. You, what do you think? What do I think? No. I agree very much with you. Yes. I can't believe it. That, that, that can't. Yes. Uh, there is no progress. I, no, no, we must go into it very carefully, sir. Because the whole tradition, both Buddhist, Hindu and Christian, every, all the religious and non-religious attitude is caught up in, the, in time, in evolution. I, say, I will be better. I will be good. I will eventually blossom in goodness. Right? Yes. I am, I am saying in that there is a root of untruth in it. There is untruth in it. Sorry to put it that way. May I ask yes. 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 Yes
Uh, I entirely agree with that. Uh, you disagree? Uh, entirely agree. Agree. For the very good reason and that uh, ever since human beings have existed as far as we know, we have always known in our different contexts uh, that we should be good. If it would be possible to progress by something like this, we would not be the human beings that we are nowadays. We would all have progressed sufficiently. Have uh, we progressed at all? That is precisely we have not progressed, if at all, very little. We may, <coughs> have, so, we may have progressed technologically, yes. and scientifically, hygienic and all the rest of it, but psychologically, inwardly, we have not that we are what we were and so ten thousand years ago or more. And so the fact that we know that we should do good and have evolved so many systems so, of how to do it has not managed to help us to uh, become uh, precisely that. And that there is, an, as I see, there is a specific obstacle in all of us. Uh, and it is this obstacle uh, that needs, because we do. Quite honestly, from our very heart, we, most of us want to be good, but most of us do not bring it off. No, but and I was like working through, which seems to be at stake. You see, we have accepted evolution. Biologically, there is evolution, and we have transferred that biological fact into psychological existence. Thinking psychologically, we will evolve. Uh, I don't think that is the attitude. No. That's but, but that's what it means. No. When you say gradually. No, I don't say gradually. I don't say that. That realization of truth, realization of truth, attainment of truth, yes. or seeing the yes. truth, yes. is. Uh, is a thing without a plan, is, without a scheme. Is out of time. Out of time. No. Out of time. Out of time. Yes, exactly, out of time. Which means then, my mind, which has evolved through centuries, millennia, hmm, which is conditioned by time, yes. which is evolution, yes. which is the acquiring of knowledge, knowledge, more, 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 will reveal the extraordinary fact, truth. It is not that knowledge which will reveal it. Therefore, why should I accumulate knowledge? But, you, but how, how can you avoid it? Psycho psychologically in avoid it, not technologically. Yes, even psychologically, ha, how ha, can you do that? Ha, that's a different matter. Yes, how can you do Because you are conditioned. No, we are no, wait, a bit, sir, wait a minute, let's go into a little more. I, does it, am I all right, sir? Fine. <laughs> and biologically, physically, from childhood up to a certain age, maturity, adolescence and so on, that's a fact. Little oak tree goes into a gigantic oak tree. That's a fact. And is it a fact? Or it we have created, assumed it is so, psychologically we must grow. Which is psychologically, eventually, I will achieve truth. Or truth will take place if I prepare the ground. No. No. That is a wrong conclusion you have come to. That is a wrong conclusion. That's it is. It is that the realization of truth is a revolution, not so, a not a evolution. No. Therefore, what you understand? So can the mind be free? of this idea of progress, psychologically. I beg your pardon? Can the mind be free psychologically of this idea of progress? It can be. Ah, no, not can be. It must be, otherwise you go. 
That is what I told you, the revolution. And that no, revolution no, is, is not a evolution, <coughs> gradual progress. It is, it so, so, psychologically, can there be a revolution? Yes. Yes, certainly. Which means what? No time. There is no time. But all, all the religions, all the scriptures, whether it's Islam, whatever it is, yes. have maintained you must go through certain systems. But not Buddhism. No, sir, wait a minute, I wouldn't even call Buddhism. I don't know, I've never read except when I was a boy about, but it's gone out of my mind. But when you say eventually you must discipline first and re- let go of that discipline, Hmm? No, I don't say that. No, I don't postulate like that. And nor did Buddha postulate. How, then please, I may be mistaken. How do you consider? How, the, I ask you, how do you pro, uh, proceed? Proceed with what? The, the realization of truth. How do you do that? Tell me. Ah, that's a different matter. Yes. <laughs> Tell me how do you do that? That's quite a different matter. Yes. I mean, just not like that. What is what I say is that we are conditioned. We are nobody can avoid that, however much he tries. And what, uh, the revolution is to see that you are conditioned. Sir, all right. Let's. Then uh, the moment you see that it has no time, all right. and uh, it is entire revolution, and that's the truth. Suppose one is conditioned in the pattern of evolution, pattern of evolution. <coughs> I have been, I am, I shall be. That's evolution. No? Yes. You understand? I was uh, ugly yesterday, yes. but today I'm learning about that ugliness and free myself, and tomorrow I'll be free of it. Right? That is our whole attitude, psychological structure of our being. This is, I mean, this is everyday fact. No? If you see that, we, we see that, right? No. See, you see, understanding is one thing, intellectually, verbally. No, no, I'm not talking either intellectually or verbally, this is a fact. I will try to be good. There is no question of trying to be good. No, 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 no. but sir, not according to the Buddha, not according to scriptures, but average human being Absolutely. of everyday life. Yes. He sure. says, I am not as good as I should be. Yes. But I eventually give me a couple of weeks <laughs> or a couple of years yes. and I'll be awfully good. Oh, certainly, that is the attitude of the people. Of, of a, practically everybody. A practically everybody. I fully agree. No, wait a minute. That is our condition. Yes. The Christian, the Buddhist, the whole world is conditioned by this idea which may have come from the biological progress, moved into the psychological field. Right? Yes, that is, that is my opinion. Now, how is a man or a woman, how is a human being to, without time, Break this pattern. You understand my question? Yes. It is only by seeing. No, no, no. I can't see if I'm caught in this blasted ugliness of progress. Yes. And you say it's only by seeing. I say I can't see. Then you can't. Then, no. But I want to inquire. Yes. I want to inquire into it, sir. Yes. That is. Why has 
Why have we given progress in the courts such importance psychologically? I'm not a scholar, so about I come from the practice side. May I, may I come in for a moment, please? Uh, I'm a practitioner, but I have done my practice uh, in a Buddhist field. And to me personally, as a Westerner, as a one-time scientist, I have found the most satisfactory answer in the Buddhist teaching that I blind myself. I am my own obstacle. As long as I, with all my bundle of conditioning, am here, I cannot see. And uh, it seems to be a possibility of... That doesn't help. Doesn't help. You're, you're saying that I've learned that. Uh, I have learned that, but I have learned it by, uh, in the same way as one learns to uh, play uh, the piano, uh, rather than in the uh, way of studying a subject. That is the point that I would like to contribute. No, I, again, you're going back to playing the piano, which means practice. Yes, practice. Uh, practice, sorry. Good pianists don't practice, I haven't been told. Uh, but they must have uh, practiced in order to become a it. So what are we talking about at the end of this? There seems to be one difficulty in this. <clears throat> Knowledge has a certain fascination, a certain power. One accumulates knowledge, whether it's Buddhist or scientific, and it gives you a peculiar sense of freedom, though it is not freedom. It's more in the realm of conventional freedom. And after years of study, one finds it very difficult to get out of this, because through years, 20, 25 years, you arrive at this and you value it, and it hasn't got the quality of uh, what you might call truth. And the difficulty with, uh, with uh, all practice seems to be that when you practice, you achieve something, and the, the achievement is of the conventional reality type. It has got certain power, certain fascination, certain capacity, certain maybe certain clarity. I might tell you, you get attached to it. Yes. And to break away from it is m much more difficult then, for a beginner, a beginner who has not got these things may see something more directly than a man who has so much of acquired wisdom. Maybe. I'm, I'm just... Is it so? Uh, that depends on the individual. You can't generalize. No, one cannot... Yes. One can, sir, from the point out, one can generalize as a principle. As a principle, uh, in which way? I mean, let, let's come back to it. And we are all caught in this idea of progress, right? I think uh, I, I, let us uh, come to an agreement on that point that the humanity accepts as a fact yeah. progress is a gradual evolutionary matter. Yes. In, so, as, as you said, biologically they accept it and prove, so they apply the same theory to psychological. Sir, yeah. That I fully agree it is the humanity's yes. position. But, so I say, is that, is that, a, is that the truth? If I, I may ha have accepted biological progress, biological evolution, which I have gradually transferred to psychological existence. Now, I say, is that the truth? Yes. Now I see your question. I don't think it is true. Therefore, just me, therefore, I abandon the whole idea of discipline. When you see that, no, no. <laughs> no, I should say that there is no question of abandoning. What? If you abandon it, uh, consciously. No, sir, just a minute. I see what human beings have done, which is 
move from the biological to the psychological. And there they have invented this idea that eventually you will come to Godhead or evolution, enlightenment and reach Brahman, reach whatever it is, nirvana, yes. paradise or, yes. or hell also. Yes, yes. yes. If, if when a human being sees the falseness of it, yes. actually not theoretically, yes. then it's finished. Absolutely, that is what I tell you all this time. Therefore, why should I? No, why should I then acquire knowledge of scriptures of this or that psychological? This is not necessary. Then why do I read the Buddha? It is, that is what I told you. We are all conditioned. Uh, I may say to chipping, you, uh, sir, I ask a question: That uh, do you accept that we are all conditioned? Dr. Bama asks, yeah. do we all accept that we are conditioned? I don't know whether you accept or not. I accept. No. <laughs> and there is nobody in time to be in time is to be conditioned. And uh, it, no, Dr. Burma is asking quite, the implication of his question is, need I translate what you want? <laughs> Go on, sir. Well, it, it's your show now. No. Uh, well, it's, I, I merely say that, uh, how can I put it, uh, uh, I think that Krishnaji has said, at least in in our, some of our discussions, that he was not uh, deeply conditioned uh, in the beginning, right? When, and that therefore he had a certain insight which would not be common. I mean, is that fair? I don't find. No, I don't he's find. referring to me, sir. Believe me, yeah. I may be, I may be a biological freak. Mm. So leave me out of it. That's well, not totally important. What we are trying to discuss is, sir, uh, is this. That psychologically can we admit the truth that there is no movement forward. The, the truth of it, I not not the idea of it. Yes. You, you understand what I said, sir? I, I understand. The, the truth of it, not I accept the idea of it. The idea is not the truth. Yes. No, no, no. So, do we, do we as human beings see the truth or the falseness of what we have done? You mean the human beings generally? I, uh, the whole world. No, they don't see. Therefore, no, certainly not. So, when you are telling them, get more knowledge, read this, read that, scripture, what the Buddha said, what Christ said, if he existed at all, and so on, so on, they are full of this accumulative instinct which will help them to j jump or propel themselves into heaven. What is that what I said? Huh? No. Yes. Uh, you want to say that? Oh. Well, uh, when we say we are uh, all conditioned, right, is that a, a... How do we establish that we are... How do we know that we are all conditioned? That's yes. really what I'm saying. This question is, sir, are all human beings conditioned? That is a very uh, complicated question. As long as our society is concerned, all are conditioned. There can't be anybody who is not conditioned because it is within time. But 
what we are talking is the realization of truth, which has no type and which is unconditioned. That you can't say it is the human being uh, as you take uh, humanity. No, but um, I really wanted to emphasize that um, if we say we are all conditioned, there could be two ways. You see, one way would be to look uh, uh, accumulating knowledge about our conditioning, right? To say that we observe an ex uh, the common human experience and we can look at people and see that they are generally conditioned, right? And the other way would be to say, do we directly see in a more direct way that we are all conditioned? That's really what I was trying to drive at. And that, of course, uh, uh, I should say, there are people who see that. But does that self mm. help in this matter? I mean, well, they may be or they may not. Yeah, but well, the kilosa. I mean. See, I, the only point I was trying to make was that if we say we are all uh, conditioned, then I think that there's nothing else to do but some kind of disciplined or gradual approach. That is, you begin with your conditioning and... Uh, and not necessarily. I don't see that. Well, let's try to uh, pursue it. I mean, this, uh, that's the way I take your question, the implication of his question, you know, I mean, Dr. Rahula's question, that if we begin all conditioned... Which we are. Which we are, then what can we do for the next step? Uh, there is nothing called next step. Right, well, how do we, how can we be sure, you know, how can we be free of the conditioning as we what, do whatever we do? Uh, the freedom from conditioning is to see. Well, same question, how do we see? <laughs> ah, that of course, uh, uh, Many people have tried various ways. I know that. So, 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 oh, say. No, there are no various way, ways. <laughs> the moment you say a way, you've already conditioned it. That is what I say. All that is finished. That is what I say. And you are also conditioning by your talk. But, sir, I don't but what I say is your talks. Your? Your lectures and teachings also are conditioning. Trying to uncondition the no, mind no, no. is also I, conditioning. I question that statement. Whether <coughs> what we are talking about conditions the mind. Yes, yes, condition of mind. Mind being the brain, the thought, uh, the feelings, the whole yes. human psychological existence. Yes. Whether what K is talking about conditions the mind. I doubt it. I question it. I think uh, uh, we are, if I may say, we are going off from the central mm. issue. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, the the, the question is how to see it. Is that so? No, no, sir. No, no, not how. There is no how. First, let us see the simple facts. Huh? Do I, as a human being, as a human being? and therefore representative of all humanity, right? I am a human being, right? And therefore I represent all humanity, right? In an individual body. No, as a human being, I represent you and the whole world. Because I suffer, I go through every mental, etc., 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 so does every human being. So, do I, as a human being, see the false step human beings have taken? 
moving from the biological mm, to the psychological, with the same mentality. There, progress from the little to the big and so on and so on, from the wheel to the jet. Do I, as a human being, do I see the, the mischief that human beings have created, moving from there to this? Yes, yes, yes. Do I see it as I see the table? Or is it, yes, I accept the theory of it, the idea of it, and then we are lost. I don't know. Yes, yes. Sir. I Therefore, the idea, the theory is the knowledge. If I see it as I see this paper, then it is not then it is not the theory anymore. Then it's the fact. But the moment you move away from the fact, it becomes idea, knowledge, and pursuit of it. And has further and further pictures. Further away from the fact. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I make much of that. Yes, quite so. Yeah. Uh, yes, that is so. What? What is? <coughs> human beings move away. Uh, human beings are caught up in no. that. No, no, no. So it is a fact, isn't it, that there is biological progress. Sm little tree to a gigantic tree, from a baby, all the rest of it, which boyhood, uh, adolescence, boy, uh, right. Now, have we moved with that mentality, with that idea, with that fact, to a, a, to into the psychological field and create there the fact that we progress? Which is a false movement. Are you saying that is part of the conditioning? Of no, I don't leave the conditioning for the moment. I don't yeah. enter into that. Yeah. So, would you say, why have we moved from, uh, taken over from the biological growth into the psychological growth? Why? Which is a fact. Why have we done this? I want to become something. Which is, you want satisfaction, yes. Yes. you want safety, certainty, a sense of achievement. And it is in that want uh, that so, pushes So, do on. I, does a human being see what he has done, actually, not theoretically? As an ordinary human being. You, you, you are X, Y, you. I, I, I do not like to see it. I do fear it. I, therefore, I, the you, do, is therefore you are living in an illusion. Naturally. Why? I want to be something no, which no. I fear at the same time not to see. This is where the why is. You are. You have. You have a false fear. There is no fear. It is Actually, false. no, madam. When you see that what you have done, there is no fear. But the fact is that but you why do don't you not see? Why don't you see? I suspect because of fear. I don't know why. I don't know. You are entering into quite a different field yeah. of fear, but I just would like to know, as an inquiry, why human beings have done this, played this game for millennia? You understand, sir? Why? This, this false, living in this false structure. And then People come around and say, be unselfish, be this, and all the rest of it. 
Why? We have a very strong, <coughs> all we do, no, no. we have a very strong irrational side in us, an irrational side. I think they cannot... I, be I question all this. I, if you we question have, it. Because we are, we are living not with facts, but with ideas and knowledge. Certainly. Certainly. Not with facts. The fact is, biologically there is, psychologically there is. And so we give importance to knowledge, ideas, theories, philosophy, and all the rest of it. You don't agree at all, you don't see at all that uh, a certain development uh, uh, evolution, uh, even psychologically? No. A, a man who has been a very undesirable criminal, telling lies and doing, stealing and all these things, uh, you explain to him certain very fundamental, very elementary things, and uh, he is changed into, uh, in our conventional sense, uh, to a better man. Now he does not steal, now he doesn't tell lies, he doesn't try to kill others. He is a and terrorist. <laughs> uh, pardon? Terrorist. The man who is changed like that. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> Are you saying, sir, a man who is e evil in court? Yes. The terrorists that are going around the world. Yes. What is their future? Are you asking that? No. 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 Don't you agree? Uh, a criminal accepted sense. Accepted word criminal, yes. Yes, criminal. You meet, you meet the criminal like that, you explain to him uh, the wrong way that he lives, and uh, he realizes what you said, either because of ideas he has realized or because of your personal influence or whatever it may be, he transports himself, he changes himself and... I am not sure, sir. I'm not sure a criminal, in the orthodox sense of that word, whether you can talk to him at all. That I don't know. What I mean, is. you can pacify him. You say, no, you know, give him a reward or this and that. But an actual criminal minded man, will he ever listen to any sanity? The terrorists, you know, sir, the terrorists. Yes. Will you listen to you, to your sanity? Uh, of course not. That you can't see. I don't, I am not so positive about it. That's what is happening, sir. <laughs> uh, that's it. That I, have, I have no proof. I can't see. I, I have no proof either. But you can see what is happening. Uh, what is happening is there are terrorists. Yes. And we don't know whether any terrorist was transformed and uh, convert to be a good man, we have no... Ah, you, see, you see, that's my whole thing. The bad man evolved into good man. That, in the popular sense and conventional sense, certainly there is. I can't deny that. I don't quite follow. A bad man Quotes bad man. Yes, that's right. Within inward commas. Mm -hmm. Bad man or a criminal uh, changing his way of life and yes. becoming a good man also within inward commas. Good. Yes. Yes. That, that, we that, know that. We have dozens of examples. Absolutely. A man who But don't we accept that at all? But no, no, no. Wait a minute, sir, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bad man who tells lies, who 
does cruel things, and so on. In, he says one day, probably he realizes that's ugly business, <coughs> and I will say, I'll change and become good. But that is not goodness. Goodness is not born out of badness. No, badness certainly not. Huh? Certainly not. Therefore, he, the bad man in quotes can never become the good man, non quotes. <coughs> no, I would uh, uh, quote for him. Ah, goodness is not the opposite of the bad. That, uh, at, that, at that level ah, it is. Ah, at any level. I don't agree. You see? I don't or see. We, we might put it this way. The, in the level, in the, in the reality oh, level, level, conventional yes. level, yes. The, good, the bad man becomes a good man. Yes. I think we carry that uh, phrase, that attitude to the progress psychologically. That's one thing we do. The human mind does. Uh, that is what we were taught. Yes. That is transfer of this idea Into to psychological level. Yes. No, I would like the other. Sir, you. If, what are you going to say something? Yes. No, the other thing is, we seem to feel that that psychological progress is the only way the bad man becomes the good man at the relative level. I don't want even to. You see, yes. Narayan, you are making it again a relative thing. Right? We is, sir, may I put it this way? Is there an opposite? At relative no, level? No, no. <coughs> At any level. Psychological. Of course, you are wearing yellow, I am wearing brown, and so on. Hmm? The opposite, light and day, man, woman, and so on, so on. But is there an opposite of fear? Is there an opposite of goodness? Is there an opposite? Is love opposite of hate? Yes. If you ask me, in opposite. Yes, that's which right. means duality. Yes, certainly. Uh, I would say this way. We are talking in dualistic terms. All language is dualistic. Uh, language is dualistic. Yes. yes. You can't yes, talk. I can't talk without dualistic. Yes, sir. Words. Comparing, judging. Yes. But I'm not talking. At, at and uh, the moment you. Speak Speak about the absolute, the no. ultimate. No, sir, I like. When we talk good and bad, we are talking in the dualistic level. No, uh, that's why I want you, to move on. You, you, you uh, can't talk about the absolute no, good or bad. No. There's nothing called absolute good or bad. No, no, sir. Is courage the opposite? What is the opposite of courage? Of fear. Fear. Is courage the opposite of fear? That is, if fear is non existent, is it courage? Or it is something totally different? Something totally different. Therefore, it is not the opposite. Goodness is never the opposite of bad. Bad. So, what are we talking about when we say I will move, change from my conditioning, which is bad, to freedom from condition, which is good? Therefore, freedom is the opposite of my condition. Therefore, it is not freedom at all. It, that freedom is born out of my condition. 
because I am caught in this prison and I want to be free. It is a reaction to the prison, which is not free. I'm I don't quite So could we consider for a minute, is love the opposite of hate? If it is the thing is you, you can say this, where there is love, I, there is no hate. I, no, 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 I'm asking quite a different question. I'm asking. Is hate the opposite of affection, love? If it is, then in that affection, in that love, there is hate, because it is born out of hate, out of the opposite. All opposites are born out of their own opposites. Listen. No? I don't know. That is, uh, that is uh, what you say. But it's a fact, sir. Look, I'm afraid. Hmm? And I cultivate courage in order to put away fear. I take a drink or you know, all the rest of it to get rid of fear. And at the end of it, I say, I'm very courageous. All the war, war heroes and all the rest of them are given medals for this because they're frightened. And they say, we must, be, we must go and kill you, do something. And they're very courageous heroes. That is not courage. Hello. Hello. No, that that is, I'm saying that is not courage. anything born out of them, and its opposite contains its own opposite. How? So if I, if I, if someone hates, and then says I must love, hmm? right? That love is born out of hate, because he knows what hate is, and he says I must not be that, and I must be that. So the oh, that is the opposite of this. Therefore. The, that opposite contains this. I don't know whether it is the opposite. But that's how we live, sir. This is what we do. I am sexual, I must not be sexual. I take a vow of celibacy, not how, people take a vow of celibacy, which is the you follow the opposite. Yes. So we are always caught in the in this corridor of opposites. And I question the whole corridor. <laughs> I don't think it exists. We have invented it, but actually it doesn't exist. I mean, please, I'm just, this is explanation, don't accept anything, sir. No. Personally, from the way in which I, where I stand at this moment, uh, see it, and I claim no possibilities for either the truth of it or something, as a working hypothesis, no, well, you can I see, see this uh, channel as a humanizing factor. Good. This channel of opposites. We are oh, all in no, it. that's not a humanizing factor. Um, it's like saying, I've been a, tri a tribal entity, now I've become a nation, no. and then ultimately into a nation. It's still tribalism going on. Yeah. I, that I quite agree. I see it in the sense and that uh, uh, at uh, a really barbaric stage, I could have laughed uh, when you uh, had uh, broken your leg and wear it open. Nowadays, I could not laugh anymore. 
That's what she's yeah, saying that we do actually, I think both, uh, both of you are saying we do in some sense make progress. Uh, I think the, in the sense that we are not as barbaric as we were before, <laughs> right? I, that that's what, what the humanizing factor. That, that's what uh, I think uh, they're both are saying. I, hmm? uh, I don't like to go to extremes. Okay? I'm not, <clears throat> this is not extreme, this is just facts. Perhaps are not extreme. Uh, are you saying that this is not a genuine progress? You see that, say, in the past people were far more barbaric generally than they are today, right? And therefore, would you say that really doesn't mean very much? I don't quite follow. Well, <coughs> some people would point to the past and say there was a great deal of barbarism then. We're still barbaric. Yes, we are, but some people say we are not as barbaric as... Uh, not as barbaric. Well, no, let, let's see if we can get it straight. <coughs> that, now, would you say that that is not important? I mean, that is not significant? No. When I say I'm better than I was, yes. it has no meaning. You say that has no meaning to say that, right? Yeah, absolutely. It has well, no I, meaning. I think we should clarify that. In the, uh, the, the, in the relative dualistic sense, I don't accept that. I, know I, I can't see that. But in the That's absolute, right. absolute, ultimate sense, there is nothing like that. No, That's not right. ultimately. That's, I won't even accept that word ultimately. I, I see how the opposite is born in everyday life. Not ultimately. I'm greedy. Hmm? That's a fact. I try to become non greedy, which is non fact. But if I remain with fact, I'm greedy, then I can do something about it. Actually. Now, therefore, there is no opposite. So, you know, violence and non violence. Non violence is the opposite of violence. Right? And as an ideal. Right? So, that non-violence is non-fact. Violence is the only fact. Right? So I, I can then deal with facts, not with non-facts. So what is your point? My point is there is no duality, even in daily life. It's the invention of all these philosophers, intellectuals, say there is the opposite. Work for that. The utopians, the idealists, the fact is I'm violent, that's all. Let me deal with that. And to deal with it, don't invent non-violence. The question, therefore, is how am I now going to deal with it? Huh? Having accepted the fact ah, that I'm No, violent, not accepted. It is a fact. Having seen it. Wait, having that, seen then it, we can proceed. I'll tell you. And, and, and the question I is how to proceed. We'll proceed with that. But first, I must see what I have done. I avoid the fact and run away to non fact. Mm -hmm. Right? That's. That's what's happening in the world, all of us. So, don't run, but remain with the fact. Can you do it? It's part of the power of him. Huh? That is part of the training that I... Ah! That is I'm, I'm sorry, I won't accept the word training. Well, uh, it is precisely this, uh, can you do it? I and see, one, of course one, you can do it. And one does it, though one very often does not like doing it. No. It's like seeing something dangerous, and you say, it's dangerous, I won't go near it. 
running away from the fact is dangerous. You don't run. That doesn't mean you train, you um, practice not to run. You don't run. I think the gurus have invented this running, the philosophers. So there is no running way. That is an entirely different. That it, it is a wrong way of putting. It. No, sir. No. No, I'm not putting. You can't it. run away. I'm no. saying, look. If you see it, there is no running in it. I'm saying, don't run. That's what I'm Then you see. Please. Ah, no. Don't run. Then you see. But we say, I can't see because I'm caught in that. No, no, I, I see that. But you see, your point I see very well. So, there is no duality. Where? Now, in daily life. Not ultimate. What is duality? Which is the opposite violence and non violence. Whole of so, you know, India has been practicing non-violence, which is nonsense. There is only violence. Let me deal with that. Let human beings deal with violence, not with the idea of non-violence. Yes, that is of course it is a quite different question. What you are talking? Which no. I fully agree. If you see the fact, this is this is the fact. Therefore, we must handle this. We therefore, there is no progress. But there is therefore there is no progress. That is a word that uh, you can use anyway. No, no, not okay, anyway. This is simply a word. No, sir. No, sir. When we have an ideal. Hmm? To achieve that ideal, I need time. Right? Yes. Therefore, I, that is, I will evolve to that. So, so no ideals. Only facts. It is perfectly so. Huh? What, is the, what is the difference? Are you? I mean, I, we, we agree. There, there are only facts. Which means, sir, uh, to look at facts, time is not necessary. Absolutely not. Therefore, if time is not necessary, I can see it now. Yes, certainly. You can see it now. Yes. Why don't you? Why don't? That is another another question. No, no, no. Yes. No, no, not another question. <coughs> so if you take it seriously that time is not necessary, right? Yes. Then right now one could perhaps clear up the whole thing. Yes. The, 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 that does not mean whole humanity will do it. There are people who can do it. No. If I can see it, you can see it. I don't think so. I don't think. I don't agree with you. No, Frank, not, not I. No, this is not a question of agreement, sir. I'm not trying to argue about this matter. So there's no uh, agreement or disagreement. But m when we have ideals mm -hmm. away from facts, time is necessary to get there. Progress is necessary. I must acknowledge progress. All that comes in. Right? So, can you abandon ideals? It is 
possible. And no, and not possible. The moment you word, use the word possible, you are time, you say time is again. I mean, the, the, the seeing the fact. Do it now, do it, sir. Not, I mean, forgive me, yes, yes, yes. Being, I'm not being authoritarian. When you say it's possible, you've already moved away. I mean to say that uh, I must say that everybody can't do it. How do you know? That is a fact. <laughs> that is a fact. No, I won't accept that. May I perhaps come in with a concrete example? I think uh, we can uh, possibly uh, come up together on that. If I stand on a high concrete fact, on a high springboard, over a swimming pool, uh, and I'm told that I cannot swim, and I'm told just jump in and relax completely, oh, no. the water will carry you. No. This is perfectly true, I can do it. There is nothing that prevents me, except that I'm frightened in doing it. Yes, or you may, that is, I you may drop. Yes. yes, and therefore uh, this is, I think, the question, of course we can see. There is no difficulty, uh, but it is this basic fear which does not stand to reason, no, that are, makes us shy away. I, we're not talking, please forgive me, we're not saying that. Why don't you, if, you, if one realizes that one is greedy, <coughs> Why do we invent non-greed? I wouldn't know, because it I seems to be so obvious that if I am greedy, then I am greedy. No. Why do we have the opposite? Why? All religions, religions say must be greedy. All philosophers, if they are worth their soul, they say don't be greedy, or something else. Or uh, if you are greedy, you will not reach heaven. So they have always cultivated through tradition, through saints, a whole big gamut of it, cultivated this idea, the opposite. Right? So I, I don't accept that. I say that's an escape from this. Which it is. Right? It is a halfway stage at best. It's an escape from this. Right? And it won't solve this problem. It hasn't solved it. It hasn't. So, to deal with the problem, remove that. I can't have one foot there and one foot here. I must have both my feet here. And if both my feet are there. Let me, no. Similarly, similarly. So I'm no opposite, which implies time, progress, practice, trying, becoming, the whole gamut. So I see, I'm greedy. What? So I see, I'm greedy. No. Or I'm violent. Yes, so what that requires. Now we have to go into something entirely different. And then what? How is one, a human being, not how, can a human being f be free of greed now? That's a question. Not eventually. I, you see, I'm not interested in being greedy next life. Who cares? Or day after tomorrow. I, I'm not interested. I want to be free of sorrow, pain now. So I have no ideals at all. Right, sir? Then I have only this fact. I'm greedy. Now, do we go into that? What is greed? The very word is condemnatory. Right, sir? Right? The word has been in my mind for centuries, and that word, greed, immediately condemns the fact. Right? 
by saying I am greedy about it, condemned it. Right? Now, can I look at that fact without the word, with all its intimations, with all its content, with its tradition? Look at it. You cannot understand the depth of the feeling of greed or the free of it if you're caught in words. So I, as, I, as my whole being is, con- is concerned with greed, it says, all right, I'm, I won't be caught in it. I won't use the word greed. Right? Now, is that feeling devoid of the word, divorced from the word, green? <coughs> it has no word. No, no. So, as my mind is full of words <coughs> and the caught in words, can, that, can it look at something, greed, without the word? That is really seeing the fact. No, there only I see the fact. Pardon? Then only I see the fact. Yes, that's without the word. Without the word. Therefore, it has no value. Yes. Finished. This is where the difficulty lies, sir. I want to be free of greed, because it's my blood, it's my tradition, it's my. The upbringing, education, everything says be free of that ugly thing. So, I am all the time making an effort to be free of that. Right? I am not educated, thank God, in those lives. So I say, all right, I want the fact. The fact is I am greedy. Right? I want to understand the, the nature and the structure of that world, of that feeling. What is it? What is the nature of that feeling? Is it a remembrance? Do you understand? That? If it is a remembrance, I am looking at it, the present green, with past remembrances. The past remembrances have said, condemn it. Can I look at it without past remembrances? Exactly. I'm going to show you to how. Right, sir? Yes, if you can see. Uh, I will show you, go into a little more. Because if I, the past remembrance condemns this and therefore strengthens this, right? If I, if it's something new, I won't condemn it. But because it is, it is not, it is new but made old by remembrances, by memories, by uh, experience, I condemn it. So can I look at it hmm, without the word, without the association of words? 
That doesn't need discipline, that doesn't need practice, that doesn't need some guide. Just say, look, can I look at that without the word? Can I look at that tree, woman, man, sky, heaven, bird, without the word? And find out. But someone comes along and tells me, I'll show you how to do it. Then I'm lost. I don't know. And how to do it is the whole sacred books. Sorry. All the gurus, all the uh, bishops, the popes, and all the gal, whole community. So, do we stop now? Yes, I think we'll stop now. It's now, like we've been talking an hour and a half. Yes, that depends on you. I am very much interested. I am not tired at all. <laughs> we better keep it for tomorrow morning, tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yes. And there are, Don't let's uh, over eat. Yes, several, <laughs> uh, several other things that I would like to ask you. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, tomorrow uh, morning and afternoon. Good.